hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us lift up our hands and begin to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the great and mighty God, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sikenu. Just lift up your voice and give him glory. Lift up your voice and give him honor. Give up your voice and give him all the adoration. He is good and his mercy is endured forever. Thank you, Lord. Just begin to render your praise unto him tonight. Thank you, Lord. Tell him, Jesus, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his hope.
Christ and exalt him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Covenant Voices, for that wonderful um, rendition. May the Almighty God continue to bless you and increase your anointing in Jesus' name. I want to welcome you uh, to another edition of Night of Praise, Word and Wonders. And as you have come unto the Lord, uh, with an expectation, I pray that God Almighty will meet you at the point of your need in the mighty name of Jesus. I would like you to open your heart to God as we're going to be looking at a very important topic that affects our life. And the theme of our discussion tonight is going to be a heart of gratitude as a catalyst to one's altitude in life. A heart of gratitude as a catalyst to one's altitude in life. Our text is going to be taken from Psalm 9, from verse 1 to 2. Um, before we go further, more than enough by Hoi. Master Jesus, I want to welcome you again to the night of praise, word and wonders. And before I go further, I would like to appreciate my father in the Lord, my pastor, and his wife for this great opportunity, Pastor Shegun Banwo and Pastor Mrs. Dolapo Banwo, to be standing in the presence of his people. And I pray, Heavenly Father, as I'm going to be speaking to your people tonight, Lord, let them not see me, but see you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, every word that will be coming out of my mouth, Father, Lord, let it come with power and with your spirit. And let it minister to your people and meet them at the point of their need in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Before we go into the word, please, let's take our affirmation. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, eternal seeds of the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same again. Never, never, never. 
I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, our text is going to be taken from Psalm 9, verse 1 to 2, please. Uh, can you put it on the screen? I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will shew forth all thy marvelous works. Verse 2. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. That is our text. Brethren, I bring a word of God to you tonight, which is really going to help your personal life. Gratitude to our maker as a catalyst to you know, reaching the highest altitude in our life. Number one. The height one attains in life is a function of one's level of gratitude to God for his love. What do I mean by this? Even in our everyday life, you cannot get to the peak of your career, you cannot get to the peak of your dreams without the help of people and without the help of God. You cannot do it on your own. That is the point I'm trying to make here. You need people's assistance to reach your goal in life. And now when people render assistance to you, do you show gratitude? Do you show gratitude to God? Actualize, I mean, for God actualizing your dreams. We pray every day to God and we, we, we pray with expectations of, you know, God answering our prayers. And those our prayers have come to, you know, uh, to pass. We have re received results for those expectations. Do you go back to God to give God thanks? And if you don't do that, then you are treading a dangerous path. You cannot get, to, you cannot attain the height of your career, your dreams, if you are not, if you don't have the attitude of, you know, uh, giving thanks and giving gratitude to God. Let's look at Psalm 107, verse 22, verse 21 to 22. Hold that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing that is what the Lord is telling us we need to show attitude to God we need to show gratitude to God for every of his blessings may God give us the grace and the understanding to know how to give thanks back to God in the mighty name of Jesus number two God inhabits the praise of his people. Second Samuel uh, verse 20, I mean Second Samuel 22 verse 1 to 7. When you show gratitude to God for his mercy, provisions, care, protection, and so on and so forth, you stand the chance and the opportunity to receive more. Let's look at what the Bible says in Second Samuel 22. Verse 1 to 7. And David spake unto the Lord the words of these songs in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hands of all, the, all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my eye tower and my refuge, my savior, thy Thou savest me from the violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemy. When the waves of death compassed me, the flood of ungodly, ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrow of hell compassed me about, and the snare of death prevented me. And verse 7. In my distress, I call upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. In this passage, David was going through a lot in the hands of his enemy, and he called unto God, he gave thanks to God, and God delivered him. So God inhabits the praise of his people, as you can see in the passage that we have just read. When you show gratitude to God for what he has done, you spur him to action to do more. Even in our everyday life, if your father or your mother did something for you and you did not show gratitude, next time when you go to him to ask him for favor or anything, you may be reluctant to do that because you have not shown gratitude. That is exactly the same thing that God expects from us. When we look at Psalms 106 verse 1, Psalm 104 to 5, 
we can find in those um, passages what the importance of gratitude to God means. Let's quickly look at examples of people in the Bible who have shown gratitude to God. David, number one. We all know that David was a man after God's heart. How come that David, God so loved David so much? When most, most people think of David, they think of him as a youth who killed the giant, I mean, the giant Goliath. He was a shepherd boy who became one of the greatest kings in Israel. He's still known for his many psalms, giving praise and thanksgiving to God. And that is one of the things that make David to be one of the greatest king in, in, in Israel. He has the heart of gratitude. He knows how to praise God. When he's in trouble, he runs to God. When he's winning uh, battles, he, prays, he, prays, he, he, he renders praises to God. He was not perfect. And there were times when he failed and sinned. But David's life is characterized by his love for and dependence on the Lord. And that was why God really loved David. And he was after God's heart. Let's look at Jonah. Jonah praised God in the belly of fish. How did Jonah find himself in the belly of fish? God told him to go and preach to the wicked Assyrians. However, Jonah decided to flee. He boarded a ship in the opposite direction and fell asleep. And while he was asleep, what happened? There was a great storm. And the people on the ship was wondering what's going on. So they, they woke him up. That he needs to pray to his God. And he told them that they should throw him into the ocean so that he knows that he has sinned against God. And he knows the reasons why the storm, you know, was raging. So he advised them that they should throw him. And when they throw him into the sea, what happened? God sent a, a fish to swallow Jonah. And while he was in the belly of the fish, by fire, by force, he learned how to pray and praise God. Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish belly. Let us look at Daniel. Daniel praised and thanked God for revelation. In Daniel 2, verse 19 to 23. You know, Daniel, God granted Daniel the ability to interpret the king's disturbing dream. And for that, he gave, he gave uh, thanks to Almighty God for giving him that revelation. What of Anna? Anna praised God and was rewarded with the sight of the long-awaited Messiah in Luke chapter 2, verse 38. Anna could have become, Anna could have became bitter when her husband died, but instead, she poured herself into the Lord's service. She spent her days and nights in fervent prayer. Her heart was sent in the things of the Lord, and the Lord rewarded her with the sight of the long-awaited. So he gave, you know, he rendered herself unto the service of the Lord. So, brethren, I'm encouraging you, not only when things are becoming rosy for you, that's when you need to, uh, you need to praise God. Even in your, when you are in trouble, when you are winning battles, you need to go back to God and give thanks. When you can't, all the blessings of God for your life, you know that you need to give thanks to God. Why do I say that? A lot of things is happening in the world. The fact that you are even alive today, you are breathing without... The head of oxygen, it's, it is enough for you to thank God for. When you see people in the hospital bed, the only thing they will be crying unto God for is, God, give me a sound health. They don't think about their family at that point in time. They don't think about their wealth. They don't think about their wealth, their job or anything. They are only praying for sound health. And here you are. You are healed and hurt. And yet you are still saying that God has not done things for you. May God give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. What about the Samar uh, Samaritan lepers? All ten lepers were healed, but only one returned to say thank you to the Lord. One day, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And he saw these men with the dreaded diseases of leprosy. Because of this disease, they were outcasts. They could not even come near their family members. And God told them that they should go and show themselves forth to the priest. And these lepers, they believed Jesus Christ and they were going in faith. As they were going, what happened? They realized that their leprosy has been healed. And one of them, 
One of the leper, when he realized, the leper had to obey Jesus to, 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 in faith. One of the lepers, after seeing that he had been healed, turned back to thank Jesus, glorifying God in a loud voice. He fell down at Jesus' feet in thanksgiving and worship. That is the expectation of God from us. When God did something for us, when God answers our prayer, then we need to go back to God in thanksgiving. We need to show gratitude to Almighty God. Why do we need to be grateful to God? The Bible is filled with commands to give thanks to God. Psalm 107 verse 1. Because of our time, we might not be able to read all these verses, but please, in your own private time, I need you to open them and look at it. Psalm 118 verse 1 also shows us the command of God on how to give thanks. God's love endures forever. Psalm 13, Psalm 136 verse 3. God is good and his mercy is everlasting. Thanksgiving and praise always go together. We cannot adequately praise God and worship God without also being thankful. You can't just say you are praising and worshiping God and you are not thankful for what he has done for your life. You need to show gratitude to Almighty God. Feeling and expressing appreciation in good is good for us. Like any wise father, God wants us to learn to be thankful for all the gifts he has given to us. It is in our best interest to be reminded that everything we have is a gift for him. It's a gift from God. Without gratitude, we became arrogant and self-centered, thinking that everything that we have achieved is by our own um, knowledge and understanding. We begin to believe that we have achieved everything in our own. Thankfulness keeps our heart in right relationship to the giver of all gifts. Let's look at James 1 and um, verse 17. James 1, 17, please. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. We can see whatever that you have achieved in life today is not by your might, is not by your power. It's by the mercy of God. Every gift comes from God. Now, let's look at the dangers of ingratitude. Ingratitude is a sin. It is a sin. If God has done something for you and you didn't show appreciation to God Almighty, it is you have committed a sin. Did you know that ingratitude or lack of thankfulness is a sin? Scriptures instruct the believers to be thankful and to praise the Lord but it is also revealed the consequences of ingratitude. There, there are consequences if you don't give thanks to God for what he has done for you. Also, ingratitude is a dangerous place to be. Ingratitude begins in the heart. When one does not acknowledge God as the giver of all good gifts, this can lead to pride and self-focus. Instead of humbly redirecting the focus back to God, Man become the focus. When man is the focus, he seek the, the fulfillment of his desires, which can lead to a downward spiral of sins. So it's a dangerous place to be. Anytime, any day, please learn how to show appreciation to God for what he has done. Ingratitude is ingratitude can lead to wrath of God. Let's look at Deuteronomy 28, verse 47 to 48. Even in that deuteronomy, God was God shows anger to his people for not uh, recognizing uh, the gifts that he has given unto them. Because thou served not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemy which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he destroy, until he have destroyed thee. As you can see, he can bring the wrath of God when you don't show uh, gratitude and thankfulness unto God. Brethren, <clears throat> Brethren, 
please, you need to uh, cultivate the habit of showing gratitude to God, not only when things are very rosy for you, even when things are not good. You show appreciation to, for what God has done in the past and what God is yet going to do. Thank you, everlasting Father, for your word. Um, if you are listening to the sound of my voice, with all these things that we have uh, you know, uh, discussed this night, that you cannot achieve anything on your own, and you need to show gratitude to God for everything that he has done for us. You cannot receive from God if you have not given your life to Christ. You cannot uh, receive from Almighty God. So I'm, I'm calling you, I'm imploring you, if you are one of those that have not uh, given your life to Christ, and you are watching and you're under the sound of my voice, please, you need to give your life to Christ. And I would like you to say after me, if you have decided to give your life to Christ, that Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I come to, I come to thee for you to save me. Lord, take me and save me. Take me from my sinful ways and bring me into your fold. For you, I accept you as my Lord and, and, and my Savior. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Father, Lord, I want to commit your children that have given their life to you. Lord, as they have decided to come to you tonight, Father, Lord, accept, it, accept them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, don't let them go back to their old ways in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, everything that they require, oh Lord, to function as a Christian, Father, Lord, give it unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Now, uh, let's take this um, prayer point. Let's take this prayer point. Uh, number one, Lord, grant me the grace to be grateful for all your memories, all your numerous blessings. Lord, grant me the grace to be grateful for all your memories, blessings. Number two, Father, help me not to take your mercy for granted. Number three, Lord, please always give me reasons to be thankful to you all the days of my life. And lastly, Lord, make me an epitome of your grace so as to attract people into your vineyards. Brethren, let us pray that God should grant us the grace to be grateful for all the numerous blessings there are a lot of things that God has done in our life. In our families, there are a lot of things that are going on in the world. His protections have been marvelous over us. Coronavirus is everywhere. You are still and nothing with your family. God has been protecting you. Let us give, let us ask God to grant us the grace to be grateful unto Him. Let us ask God to help us not to take His mercy for granted in our life. Because one thing that I've noticed is that people just took God for granted. There are a lot of things that God has done unto us, that God has done for us, but we don't acknowledge it. We just feel that it is normal. Let us pray to God that we will not take him for granted. Let's pray that God will always give us the reason to be thankful unto him. God will always give you to, to be thankful unto him all the days of our life. Everlasting Father, we want to pray that you make us an epitome of your grace so as to attract people into your vineyard. Father, Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Father, Lord, give us the grace and the heart to be grateful unto you all the days of our life. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us pray for the man of God that God has used to bless us this evening. Let's pray that the unction to function, God Almighty will grant unto him. Let's pray that the word he has preached today will not be used against him on the day of judgment in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray that God Almighty will grant him a heart of gratitude. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. It's offering time. We already know it's always blessed to give than to receive. Let us dip our hands into our pocket and give a worthy offering to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The offering account details will be displayed on the screen. For those who are listening to us via audio, I'll read the offering account details to you. Zenith Bank, 
1017046320 let us pray in Jesus name our father and our king in heaven father we thank you for yet another time to give unto you king of glory we pray you accept our offerings in Jesus name as many who want to give but do not have Father, Lord, I pray by this time next week, Father, Lord, you provide for them in the name of Jesus. Father, let our offering be acceptable unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' matchless name, I have prayed. Amen. We will call on the covenant voices to give us a worthy offering song. Hallelujah. You want the con oh yeah. You want the con You want the logo, yeah. Ever be honoring. You want the logo, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You want the logo, yeah. Mighty Father, the King of creation. You want the logo, yeah. You want the logo, yeah. You want the color, oh yeah. Mighty Father, the King of creation. You want the color, oh yeah. Ever be glory. You want the color, oh yeah. You want the color, oh yeah. Mighty Father, the King of creation. You are the one that we adore. You are love, I hear You're the one that we adore. Hey, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Jesus, Jesus Christ, our God.
If you have been blessed, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Component voices, God bless you. I pray that you will not lose your voices in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to take some prayer points. And before we do that, let's take this song. We are grateful. Oh, Lord, we are grateful, Lord. We are grateful. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. For all you have done for us. Hallelujah. We are grateful. Oh, Lord. Psalm 119 verse 105. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We are going to take the prayer point that says, Father, thank you for your word we heard this evening. Father, thank you for your word we heard this evening. Begin to thank God. The topic for the message said, A heart of gratitude as a catalyst to one's altitude in life. Begin to thank God, even for bringing his word to you this evening. His word is a lamp unto thy feet. Ask him to help you with a heart of gratitude so that his light, his word will guide you, will take you to places in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Psalm 103 verse 1 to 2. Psalm 103. 3 verse 1 to 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We are going to say, Father, please give me a heart of gratitude at all times. Ask the Lord to give you the heart of gratitude. We heard what our pastor said this evening. He said, Give God a heart of gratitude at every point in time that God does something for you go back to him and thank him when you thank him he will do more when you request so begin to thank God for all he has been doing for you for all he has done begin to mention them he has protected you he has provided for you he has done so many things even the ones who could not remember even the ones who could not see father will thank you will bless your holy name we we'll give your glory. We are not taking what you have done for us for granted in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, ancient of days, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Matthew 16, verse 18. And I will say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A prayer point will be, Father, in the name of Jesus, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of God. The church of God is his people. The church of God is you and I. So begin to pray and tell God that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of God. That no matter the plans of the wicked ones, no matter the plans of the devil, they will not prevail against the church of God. Let us pray. And tell God that in any way they have gathered against the children of God, in any way they have, they have gathered to destroy the plan of God for us in our lives, in any way they have gathered even to, to make sure that those people that have given their life to Christ will go back to their old life. Let's begin to come against them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we renounce, we reject, we say no to every plan of the enemies against your children. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, bless your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. We are going to pray for the power of God to be made manifest in the church. Begin to ask God, let his power be made manifest in the church. The children of God need signs. They need wonders. They need the word of God that will transform our lives. So begin to ask God, let his his power be upon every member of this church, every member of his children, nationwide, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let your power descend on us to manifest physically, spiritually, 
and otherwise in every area of our lives. Father, will ask, let your power do that which no man can do in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. First John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We are going to pray for Nigeria. Let us begin to ask God for mercy. In Nigeria, we have sinned against God, individually and collectively. Let's begin to ask God for mercy. It is only the mercy of God that can save Nigeria at this point in time. A lot of things are happening, a lot of crimes, a lot of kidnapping, a lot of killing, so many horrible things happening in Nigeria. Let's ask God for mercy. Let his mercy be upon Nigeria. Let his mercy be upon Nigeria. And also ask God for revival. We need revival in the land. We need revival in Nigeria. Once it is well with Nigeria, it is well with every one of us. Begin to ask God to revive Nigeria again. To revive Nigeria again. In any way we have come short of the glory of God. Let revival take place again in the lives of the children of God. Father, we pray that even the politicians, the leaders, O oh Lord, that you will grant them the mercy to, for them to be able to lead your children as they have promised in the name of Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. We are going to pray and tell God, please erase every handwriting of ordinances written against Nigeria and give us peace. So we are continuing to pray for Nigeria. Thank God. Every handwriting of ordinances against Nigeria. Anywhere they have gathered to say that Nigeria will not move forward again. Anywhere they have said that the economy of Nigeria will be depreciating. We are saying no to it in the name of Jesus Christ. In any way they have said that there will be no peace again in Nigeria. Whatever they are doing, we don't want to know because we know that the word of God is above whatever they want to do. Let's begin to tell God. Remove every ordinances that have been placed against Nigeria and give us peace. It is your peace, O Lord, that we need. Give us peace, sessions of days. Give us peace in this nation. We don't want war. We don't want killing again. We don't want kidnapping. We don't want rape. We don't want all those things that make your children to be afraid. Father, please help us. Help us, Lord. Even the disease of COVID-19, this pandemic, Father, we are tired of it. And we are bringing it to an end today. In one accord, we are saying that the word of God will bring to an end COVID-19 in Nigeria and the entire world in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to return to normal. Father, please grant unto us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Bless your holy name. Please, you can bring your personal request before God now. There's something that brought you in the presence of God. Bring it. Those things that you are not able to tell anybody, even your closest friend, tell it to God now. He's, he's close. He's with us. Say it. He alone can do it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, for my family. I thank you for my church. I thank you for everything I've been doing. Please do it again. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Our Father and our God, we just want to say thank you for the opportunity even to pray before thee. The confidence we have in you is that anytime we call upon you, you answer us. Please answer us today again in the name of Jesus Christ. Our declaration concerning our nation, Nigeria, is that your word will reign in Nigeria and your word will reign in the lives of everyone and we will have peace, peace in abundance in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father and our God, for our sad prayer. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I say no Di 
Praise the Lord. Yeah, we're bringing the service to a close now. Um, like I mentioned uh, in my sermon to you, uh, you need to develop the heart of gratitude unto God. You need to always thank God. You need to remember all the good things that God has done uh, in your life, in your family, in your career. You need to count your blessing and give God all glory at all times like a child who go back to his father and show gratitude for those good things that God, I mean, his father has done unto him. Don't let us take God for granted. Please, let us go over that message. Let us read those passages. It's going to help our personal life. And I pray as you do so, the God Almighty will continue to take you to a higher, higher height in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, we're bringing this service to a code. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we want to thank you for tonight and for your word. Father, Lord, as we have recognized the importance of giving gratitude to you, O oh Lord, please, Lord, renew our heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Henceforth, let us continue to know how to praise you and thank you for all the numerous blessings that you have given unto us, for the life that you have given unto us, for the perfect earth that you have granted unto us, Lord. We will never take you for granted in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, for every, every individual that have watched or have streamed online and they have one request or the other in their life, Father, Lord, I pray as they have tendered those requests unto you, Lord, you shall, they shall receive answers to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, they shall have testimony to their personal request in the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit the nation Nigeria into that, into that hand, oh Lord, all these, um, a pandemic and the plague that is ravaging the land. Father, Lord, we pray and we ask for your mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Your banner will continue to be over us in the mighty name of Jesus. None of us will die. None of us will be a victim of coronavirus in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have, we have prayed. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Dimozi bini kwe, anasi, alleluia. 